Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 33 of November 2014 of A-Level Math. Now, in this video, we're going to be trying our best to explain everything as detailed as possible. Uh, now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Now, let's move on to question number one. So here we have to solve the inequality. Um, so you can see here we have modulus on both sides, but also we have x on both sides, so we will square both sides. So you will have 3x minus 1, square, 2x plus 5, square. Expand, you will have simply 9x square, uh, minus 6x plus 1, less than 4x square, plus 20x plus 25. Now, one question you may ask is how, how do you expand this? Obviously, it is something that we should know. It is a formula that I use in my mind. So that will be a square, square the first one, plus 2 times ab, and then plus b square. So this is how I do this. So first, I square the first one, and then plus 2 times a times b, and then square the last one. Otherwise, if you don't want to, you can always say, well, this is the same thing as a plus b times a plus b. So you can use this one as well and take your time to expand this one by one. Up to you, right? Now what's next? We have to send everything to one side. 9 minus 4 is 5x squared. Minus 6 minus 20 should be minus 26x. Plus 1 minus 25 should be minus 24, less than 0. So finally, we have to find the critical values. So take the same equation that we have over here. Then equate that to, to 0. Now we have to factorize. 5x squared is 5x, and times x. Now 24, we have to use two pairs, well, I mean one pair, which is either 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, or 4 times 6, to get the value of minus 26 right here. So by observation, again, by trial and error in my mind, I will use 6 and 4 here. Now you can see clearly we have to have minus 26, I have to be minus 30, so 5 times minus 6 is minus 30, plus 4 should be minus 36. Now let's check, plus times minus is minus, and here we have minus, so good to go. So x will be the value of minus 4 over 5, x will be the value of, of 6. Now finally, use my number line right here, here you go. This is the value of minus 4 over 5, and this is the value of 6. Now, because the coefficient of x squared is positive, we have to know it is a minimum curve, will have a minimum shape. You can see this have to be less than zero, so below this line, right? So it will be only between those two. So finally, x have to be between the values of minus four over five and six. And that is your question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. So a curve is defined for the value of theta between zero and pi by two. So pi is 182, that should be 90. So pi by two is 90 degrees. So basically we should know theta will be between those two values in this question. Okay, cool. Now what else? X is defined by this, Y is defined by this. We have to find dy by dx is equal to this. Okay, so one by one. Let's first define what is dy by dx in this question. So obviously, dy by dx, as we have seen before by chain rule, it is dy on top times something, but dx at the bottom. But they have to be connected by something, by what you can see, x is in terms of theta, y is in terms of theta, so over here we have d theta and d theta, obviously. So thus you have to first find this one, and then find this one to find dy by dx. So let's first differentiate this one with respect to theta. So dy by d theta will be what? It is a product. We use the product rule. That will be 2 cos square theta times cos theta plus sine theta times 4 cos theta times minus sine theta. That will become 2 cos cube theta minus 4 sine square theta and cos theta. Here you go. Now we can uh, simplify if you want to because you can see clearly uh, the final answer is in terms of cos only. We can change this one to cos. This is 1 minus cos square theta. Now we can simplify that will become what? 2 cos cube theta minus 4 is 
outside. So cos times this should be cos theta minus cos cube theta. Now we can simplify that should become 2 cos cube theta minus 4 cos theta plus the value of 4 cos cube theta. That will become 6 cos cube theta plus 4 cos theta. Now let's see, okay, actually it is minus 4 right here. My apologies, minus 4. Now finally we have to find the value of d theta by dx. So x is equal to tan of theta. So dx by d theta should be the value of sec square theta, which is 1 over cos square theta. So to find dy by dx, replace back in your main equation, right? So dy by d theta is this one, 6 cos cube, this one, minus 4 cos this one. Now multiply by d theta by dx. So here we have dx by d theta. So to find this one, we have to flip this upside down. Now it will become cos squared, this one over 1. So you will have 6 cos 5 theta minus 4 cos power 3, this one. Which is shown as required for question number 2. Now let's move on to question number 3. So here we have a polynomial, uh, this equation right here, defined by p of x. Now it is given that this one and this one, they are both factors of p of x, so pretty easy. It means that when p takes the value of minus 1, right? Because when you equate the factor to 0, the value is minus 1. The remainder will be 0, and this one as well, the value will be minus 2, same logic as before, have to be 0. So using that information that we have over here and here, let's form two equations to find the value of a and b. Replace, first one will be minus 1, that should be minus 1 cubed times 4 to be minus 4, plus a minus b minus 2 have to be 0. So a minus b have to be 6, number 1. Number 2 for this one, that should be uh, minus 8 times 4 should be the value of minus 32. Here we have plus 4a, um, minus 2b, minus 2 have to be 0. Now we have 4a minus 2b equal to 34. Divide by 2, you will have 2a minus b is equal to 17. This is my equation number 2. So now we have two equations to solve for the values of a and b accordingly. So let's make a become subject here. a will be the value of 6 plus b. Fair enough, right? Now replace a right here. You have 2 times a. That should be 12 plus 2b minus b. That should be 17. So b will be the value of 17 minus 12. And that should be just 5. Therefore, a, 6 plus 5, and that should be 11. So we have confirmed the value of a is 11 and b have to be the value of 5. Now for part 2, where a and b has these values, as we have just seen, find the remainder of p of x when divided by this one. Okay, so let's see what happens. So right now we have p of x has been found to be 4x cubed. a is plus 11x uh, squared plus 5x minus 2. This is my p of x. Now we're trying to find the remainder when this is divided by, by this one. This is my divider. If I and this is my function p of x. And then let's perform long division to see what is the remainder of this one. So to make x squared become 4x cubed times 4 first and then x, right? So you will have the value of 4x cube plus 0x squared and plus 4x. Fair enough, right? This will go away. And this will be 11x squared plus 1x minus 2. Now to make x squared become this one, time plus 11. So you will have 11 x squared. That will be plus 0x. And here you will have the value of uh, plus 11, right? That will become 0. Here you will have 1x. And the value here will be the value of what? of minus minus become minus 13. 
Okay. Now, obviously, we don't have. Uh, we, I mean, we can, but we don't have this in this. So eventually, the remainder will simply be what x minus thirteen will be my remainder of this equation. And this is your question number three the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.